It's late afternoon in Kigamboni, Tanzania. Ferry owners are waiting for their barges to fill up with the last passengers of the day. They then make the less than one kilometer trip over the sea strait that separates Kigamboni from the rest of Dar es Salaam. It's a regular and uncomfortable expense. But for the past few decades, it's been either this or a 35 kilometer land trip to get from Kigamboni to Dar es Salaam city. The government owned ferries chugging to and fro have become a reliable part of the landscape but they have their limitations. Sometimes people have to wait long for a ferry to fill up. And they don't operate after midnight. But now, the landscape is changing. The 680-meter cable state bridge is under construction. It'll span the stretch of the sea that separates the Kigamboni area's 45,000 residents from the rest of Dar es Salaam. The cable state design has towers from which cables support a bridge deck, enabling it to cover bigger distances. Local authorities have plans for big residential developments at Kigamboni, and the bridge will form a vital part of this. It's actually very important for the development of Dar es Salaam and the country in Nihal. Also, to remove the, or to reduce the congestion in Dar es Salaam, because the cars are going one direction. They are not going in this east direction. <laughs> Local fishermen have been watching the progress with great interest. Rumors that a bridge would one day span the Kigamboni Strait have been going around for decades. Now they finally see it materialize. This bridge was in plan by our country to be constructed since 1961 when we got our independence. But unfortunately, the technology and the cap capacity to build it was not there. It was only in 2012 that a Chinese construction company started the building process. It was not a deliberate decision that we are going to use the Chinese, but it was an open international tender. 30 international companies applied, of which five from China and two from Europe were shortlisted. A prerequisite was that companies should have constructed a similar cable state bridge within the past 15 years. It, it happened that Chinese companies have constructed a lot of cable state bridges recently than the ones in Europe. I don't know why, but uh, this, is, this was according to what had been submitted. In the end, the tender was awarded to China's major bridge engineering company, MBEC, along with another Chinese joint venture partner. Construction costs are estimated at around 62 million US dollars they were the lowest evaluated tender. So it was a competitive tender all over the world. Everybody was invited to come, and they, that was the result of a competitive tender. But Tanzanians are planning to get more than a bridge out of the construction deal. During the project, 568 direct local jobs are being created. But even more importantly, 
180 workers are comprehensively trained in various professional skills. Because this kind of technology just comes once, we think it cannot come again another time. So it's very important for locals to get this technology, to be trained in this, so that later we can even have our only local people to, to work with a few foreigners. Uh, you know, Kikamboni Bridge is a cable steel bridge. Uh, its structure is very complicated. Uh, so every process we must train the local people, uh, otherwise they can't do this job. Equip locals with skill, that means uh, it can help us improve the work efficiency. Uh, it can help us finish the project on time. Joseph Isanje is one of the workers that have received skills training. He has progressed well and has been promoted to foreman of his section. Nimekuwa katika mradi huu kwa miaka miwili sasa na nimeona mabadiliko kwa ujumla. Awali yote ni kwamba nilikuwa niko duni kiuchumi na sasa kidogo angarau nimenyanyuka kiuchumi na nimeweza kujifunza mambo mengi tu kwa sababu tumekutana na watu wa tofauti kidogo sisi ni watu weusi na wenzetu ni watu wa china Joseph knows very well that the nature of construction work is always temporary When the project ends he'll have to look for a new job to support his large family The Isanja family tries to be as self-sufficient as possible, growing their own maize and vegetables and doing odd jobs where they can. In Tanzania, primary school tuition is free, but parents still want to pay for uniforms and books. Joseph hopes to be able to use his new skills to earn a better income. He wants to give his children as good an education as possible. Ni kweli matumaini yangu makubwa ni kwamba hata mara baada ya kuisha kwa mradi huu naweza nikawa nimejifunza vitu vingi hasa. Kwa sababu kwanza kikubwa ninachojivunia ni kwamba nimejifunza ni jinsi gani niweze kuishi na watu wa tofauti. Pedestrians are already using the temporary bridge structure to cross over from Kigamboni to Dar es Salaam. In a couple of months, the completed bridge will accommodate six lanes of traffic and two sidewalks. Meanwhile, the ferries keep up their daily watery commute. Passengers are getting increasingly agitated by the shortcomings of this mode of transport. Sometimes a uh, big ship is closing, so you have to wait maybe for half an hour, for one hour. This boat, they put you on a motorcycle sometimes with passengers, with bags of food. But when the bridge will be complete, you think people, maybe they can carry their bag on and move and uh, cross the bridge. Fears that the bridge will leave the ferrymen without jobs are quickly allayed by authorities. You know, the good thing is that uh, the one who is running the ferry is the government itself. And the, the bridge, at the end of the day, is going to be the government property. We can take that ferry to other places and other people 
that the people were using the ferry and the men were coming, they'll be using the they'll be using the bridge. Gaps are being bridged in Tanzania between communities, between cultures, and hopefully ultimately also between need and development. And between untrained and skilled. In another part of the continent, in South Africa's scenic Western Cape province, a guest house owner is rustling up a traditional Chinese breakfast. Chicken stir fry with lots of garlic and soya sauce. Plated steamed bread and gongji, the popular Asian rice porridge. His guests, a group of young Chinese students who have just passed a stringent selection process in China. They have come halfway around the world to realize a common dream. To fly. To all. China is one of the fastest developing economies all over the world, if not the fastest one. And as part of that, they require 2,500 commercial pilots per year. And they can only accommodate or train about 1,500 in China. So traditionally, over many years, the past 10, 12 years, they have outsourced it to countries like America and Australia. And we then started with a proposal to, to train a small part in, in South Africa. And uh, that's how it all started. Roy, so what is this over here? Uh, let's do Elro. It's Elron, okay. Yes. So Elron, we're checking, make sure the surface is all... Flying cadet Roy Chang is busy doing his pre-flight checks under the watchful eye of instructor Matthew Rawlings. Up there, gently. Make sure this one goes up, that one goes down. Yes. Down and up. So now, checking here, we're looking down for four bars. Like his fellow cadets, Roy has been sent to South Africa by one of 12 commercial airlines in China to get his basic training as a commercial pilot. Over many years, the past 20, 30 years, South Africa established itself as one of the leading training, flight training providers worldwide. You know, I'm not going to be overconfident and say we're the best, but what I can assure you is that we compare with the best in the world. Heading 070 degrees, continue climbing 5,200 feet. Have a radio control, turn right to heading 030 and then continue to climb to 5,200 feet. Have a For both cadets and instructors, overcoming cultural and language differences has been a minor challenge. The food and the culture is different with the China. And uh, I know, and I have to get used, used to it. I have to adapt it. So it's, it's OK. And the people around here in South Africa is very friendly, maybe very happy. So I'm very happy to be here. My ear now is, is tuned to them. I don't actually notice anymore when new students come. I can't tell if there's good or bad English. I just understand exactly what they're saying. And it doesn't matter what they're trying to explain to me. I can just give them a key word. You can almost see it in their face, what they're trying to say. It's in their head, but they just can't get it out and express it. And you just pick it up and give them the word, and then, oh, now they realize what the word they were looking for, and they just complete the rest of the sentence, and it's fine. Once again, check for what? Four balls. Yeah. So I think I've been fortunate. I've been working in the company now for the last four years. I've had you know, exposure to different you know, types of people from different, all the way from around the world. I'd say the Chinese yeah. definitely are some of the hardest working and most disciplined yeah. students that we have here at the time. A few years ago, the flight school faced a dilemma. The Chinese government decided that in future, all flight training had to be done by Chinese companies. The solution turned out to be an easy one. The South Africans formed a joint venture with Chinese aviation giant AVIC and the AVIC International Flight Training Academy, or AIFA, was born.
They now have training facilities in Oates Warren, George and Beaufort West. We are very, very privileged, you know, to, to, to have a, a, a partner like Avic International, which is a, a, one of the biggest companies in China. You know, we're fortunate that we can acquire brand new aircraft, brand new simulators, um, you know, so it's nice to do training like that. Um, we have a, a nice contract with them in place and that will continue for, for, I would think, the next 10, 10 to 15 years at least. Again. The partnership has been beneficial on many fronts. Angus Zung has been in South Africa for four years now. After his training, he became an instructor. Sometimes I would give them some suggestions, uh, like you must uh, treat them like more strict, be more strict with uh, the students, especially the Chinese students. You must be quicker too slow reaction. Okay, your rate of descent either too high or too low. Okay, you must try to manage that. Because uh, the, the local uh, instructors, they are very friendly to the students. Cadets start with a basic English course in China, then theoretical training to get their South African private and then commercial pilot's license. They also rack up 250 hours of practical flying. Returning to China at the end of their training is a matter of completing a relatively simple theory and flight test to have their South African license converted to a Chinese one. If I go back to China, the most important thing is to go back to my airline company to get the training of the Boeing 737 to be a commercial pilot, one day to be a captain for me. It's a very nice job. All right, just look up before you start, left to your right, there's no persons. Okay, right, was that clear? the best uh, career, I think, the best job for me. Uh, to be a pilot, to be free, like a free bird. And uh, it's very nice to fly an uh, aircraft. And uh, it's a responsible, a responsible work. can make a lot of money for me. I want, I can't wait, I want to be a pilot. <laughs> it's different, in China it's busy and noisy. And here it's, it's quiet and uh, the environment is very good. I enjoy it. The both of China and uh, South Africa is good. I like then both. Just run your hand gently on the bottom. The, the Chinese economy is, is a world-class economy. It's probably their turn to, 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 to control world economy, which they, I think, to a large extent are doing. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that, you know, if you don't look into that market, from a business point of view, you will be very short-sighted. Tanzania's Kigamboni's Bridge is one of many examples of Chinese companies getting involved in infrastructure development in Africa. When we talk about African economies being lagged behind, the first thing that, you, that people mention is lack of infrastructure. So that need drives Chinese companies here in terms of looking for opportunities. China's favorable foreign policy towards Africa increasingly leads to Chinese companies winning international competitive tenders. 
They can get you know credits and loans from different financial agencies from the Chinese state. So that gives them that gives them an advantage to align themselves like lower compared to other other construction companies. Chinese construction companies seem well placed for the challenge. The Chinese companies uh, have you know contributed to developing infrastructure back in China. So I mean, they have acquired a certain amount of skills. But research warns that it's also up to African countries to make sure they get lasting benefits out of using Chinese expertise. A specific country or a specific businessman has to make that win-win thing happen, like, you know, on his side. And for that, you need to be strategic. The AVIC International Flight Training Academy certainly seems an example where strategic thinking by both countries has led to a successful transfer of skills. This time from Africa to China. Chinese government aims to become a regional aviation hub. So since 2011, the governments actually built more than 70 new airports and they renovated more than 100 airports and also like it I mean the country is in need of new fully trained like uh, pilots and you know, technicians researchers believe the potential of forming training partnership is still largely untapped the education sector can have like great potential actually because I learned English in South Africa, actually. So there are many Asian students who want to learn English in other countries besides America or Canada or Australia. So also I think South Africa can provide this service to other Asian students, actually. That can be a profitable business. Divides are crossed and bridges are built. As slowly but steadily, two continents are learning from each other.